We are here speaking with Judge Charles Breyer, the brother of Justice Stephen Breyer, who of course just announced his res resignation. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, my pleasure. So it must have been a momentous occasion for you to watch this announcement. We just saw the president up there with your brother making this announcement. What was that like for you? Yes, it, it is a, uh, uh, it's a momentous occasion. Of course, it's a family occasion. Uh, he is my brother. And uh, uh, I know how much uh, he loves this job. Uh, and uh, I think it was a difficult decision uh, for him to make. But he had the idea that, that he has a responsibility to the country to the, and to the institution of the court. And he thought now is the proper time to, uh, uh, to leave. Well, let's talk a little bit more about that. He's, he's sort of prided himself on being apolitical, but this resignation doesn't seem like that at all. Exactly. Uh, well, let me, you know, I, I, I think uh, uh, his, his view of being apolitical is that you shouldn't do something just because the politics of the situation dictate that it makes sense. But that's not at all the same thing as saying uh, that political considerations shouldn't be taken into account. And, uh, uh, and they were in this case. I mean, and you can take a look at any number of justices who, if you do a study, will show that traditionally uh, they leave, if they don't die in office, they leave uh, when a president of the same party uh, who appointed that justice uh, is available to appoint a replacement. So yes, of course you're right. Uh, politics uh, 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 was a consideration, uh, but it wasn't the only consideration. Okay. What do you think will be his lasting legacy on the court? Well, I I hope, uh, and others can speak to this better than I, but I hope it is uh, his devotion to the Constitution and his view that the Constitution works and that it works for everyone. It's not just a legal document that sits, gathers dust and is interpreted. Uh, it is something that, that everybody uh, must, uh, uh, you know, must try to understand and that it affects everyone. Uh, now, I think that, uh, that one of his great disappointments uh, was a disappointment that, that he shared with Justice Sandra O'Connor. Uh, interestingly enough, both of them are Westerners, uh, uh, which was uh, the, the, uh, uh, the decline in uh, civics classes, uh, in making them compulsory or mandatory civics classes in the schools, especially public schools, uh, uh, that he thought everybody should try to understand the way the government works and uh, uh, that will lead to a much broader inclusion of people in the entire process. And what did he think was, was that students were gonna miss by not having those courses? Oh, well, I mean, uh, uh, I think what he thinks will miss is that, is that people will not understand uh, the role of the courts in, in, in our government. Uh, that it may very well be viewed as just another uh, political branch. And, uh, and judges may very well look like uh, uh, politicians who wear black robes, which I think is really what he was tremendously concerned about. Now, if I can get personal with you for a second, can you tell us a little bit about your relationship with your brother? Obviously you followed much of the same path, both becoming uh, honorable judges. Uh, what, did you talk about legal issues at the Thanksgiving well, table? How did this go? <laughs> Did we talk about legal issues uh, growing up? No. Uh, uh, actually, uh, our father uh, was a, uh, an attorney and was the attorney for the San Francisco Public Unified School District for 41 years. Uh, uh, but I would say that our mother <laughs> was the person who, uh, who, who <laughs> imposed the law <laughs> on us. Uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, you know, she was very, very smart, very gifted, very understanding, and very, very committed to having her children try to be, uh, to, try to be aware of what's going on in life and not 
leading an insular uh, existence. We both went to public schools, uh, grammar school, high school. Uh, we both had jobs during the summer, uh, especially that, that would be that would be the kind of jobs uh, that would that would bring us into contact with other people. Steve was uh, uh, I was a custodian at, at, a, at a school, swept out the school every day during the summer. Uh, uh, he worked on a PG&E construction crew. Hopefully he's not responsible for PG&E's present problems. Uh, and, uh, and he also, uh, he worked at a camp one summer, Camp Mather, which was the San Francisco uh, Park and Recreations Camp in Yosemite, serving food. And the firemen, the policemen, other people in the, in the city would go there and that would be what, where they would spend their summer. And all of that, was to try to make us feel, because parents like their kids to feel special, and I think in a sense we, we felt special, uh, but try to teach us that there's so much more uh, in life than just our, our, you know, our present existence, our present group of friends and so forth. So that's what it was like going up, growing up. Uh, our mother uh, uh, would uh, be part of the United Nations uh, Hospitality Center. So when people came, to San Francisco in the 40s and in the 50s. Uh, we would frequently have people over for dinner from different countries. Uh, she was very active in the League of Women Voters. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and our aunt was uh, very active with the SEIU. She was the first woman president of a local chapter uh, in, uh, for the SEIU. So it was very much a, a family that wanted to get involved. In, in, in what I call real life or the life of the community. Absolutely, so many different perspectives, I'm sure that affected both of you. Is there anything else about your brother that maybe we don't know that you'd like us to know? Sure, I think this, uh, he has a wonderful sense of humor. Uh, he, uh, uh, he keeps it out of, uh, under wraps occasionally, uh, but uh, he, uh, he he loves old movies. He loves old songs. Uh, you can get on his iPhone, he'll play uh, all these World War II songs and movies and, and, and watch movies, uh, uh, old movies frequently. And uh, uh, he uh, uh, loves, to, uh, loves to share it with his grandchildren and, and with the family. So he is very much a family person. So any idea what's next for him? Do you think he might move back to the Bay Area? No, I think that, uh, I think he'll visit the Bay Area for a number of reasons. First of all, I'm here, but more importantly, a grandchild of his is here because his son uh, lives in the Bay Area. So I think he'll be out here. I think he will uh, uh, return to Cambridge, Massachusetts, uh, where he's lived uh, since, uh, 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 his time uh, when he was associated with Harvard after his, after his education. So I think he'll be there, do that. He's tremendously interested in architecture. He's on the Pritzker Architectural uh, Foundation Prize. Uh, he has great interest in, in buildings. Uh, he loves to cook. Uh, he loves to write. He loves to talk. So I think, I think he's going to be pretty busy. I it sounds it's, like it. And any thoughts on his successor? We just heard from the president that it is going to be a black female. No. Well, uh, uh, I don't have any specific uh, candidates. Uh, I think it's I think it's wonderful uh, to increase the diversity on the court. And uh, I applaud the president for his commitment, and I'm sure he'll be honored. And I, uh, my only wish is that. Uh, uh, that it be done, <laughs> and maybe this is a pie in the sky, <laughs> look at it, but I don't know that it has to be so partisan. I just don't know. You take a look, we'll see who the nominee is, and my guess is that if you've got somebody of the other party in a room and said, well, what do you think about this person? What do you really think? Do you think she's qualified? Do you think she'd be good on the court? Just tell me, off the record, what do you think? you would get a number of Republicans who would say, yes, I guess. Now, did they vote as a block? 
Democrats vote as a block. Well, I'd like to see that not happen in this particular case, if at all possible. Okay, any other thoughts? Anything else you'd like to share? No, I appreciate this opportunity and, uh, and uh, 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 thank you so much. Thank you, Judge Charles Breyer with uh, irreverent take on your brother. Thanks, there we you appreciate go. it. Okay, thank you, bye-bye.